I liked Jamal Hill from the very first time I've seen him fight. Jamal Hill, guys, I don't know if there's a fighter that I could like anymore. His swag. I like the way he walked to the ring. His demeanor. This guy's fun. I liked everything about him. He just oozed charisma and good vibes. I like the way he performed. And there's certain things that athletes can do, and I'm talking athletes here, okay? Where you will quickly identify them as special. He's confident, but not cocky. Because like my confidence comes from the fact that I know I'm gonna do the right things. Because I know the right things to do and I know the steps to follow. You know what I mean? That's where my confidence comes from. It's not like, oh, I can just go in there. And, I never feel like I can, oh, I can just go in there and do whatever the fuck I wanna do. Ignore the basics, ignore the fundamentals, and then still pull out a victory. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in on the details. As long as I know, I feel like I know exactly what to do, I'm good. Serious, but not disrespectful. And you got some praise from John Jones tonight. You said that your style looks amazing. That's, uh, that's appreciated, you know. I appreciate it. And you know, but it don't change. It don't change the fact that, you know, one day. One day. <laughs> And I know you kind of gave a little respect there to Jones, but you also kind of hinted that he could catch those hands as well. First thing I said about Jamal is this kid needs more experience. One of the first things I noticed about him is that he is a thinking fighter. In the second round, he comes out and shows me a completely different fighter. He mixes everything up to the head and body. Body work. And uses his full arsenal that's available to him. The striking. Hands, feet. The pressure. Knees, elbows. The composure. Very educated strike placement. You know, he put it all together. Find a guy in MMA that can work his way in, find that body and work his way back out. You are now seeing something special. This is what Jamal Hill, Jamal Hill does so well. He was digging to OSP's body, but he was, he was doing it so seamlessly. He was doing it like it was a jab or a cross to the head, bump, bump to the body, come back upstairs. It was one of these things where you're watching a rare athlete. You're going, okay, just how, just how talented, purely athletically, is this guy? I remember even Halle Berry took notice of him. During the buildup to his fight with Paul Craig, there was some bad blood, but it ultimately turned out to be a misunderstanding and there was nothing but respect shown afterwards towards one another. Like all that other, sh which later turned out to be shit that he didn't even know was said. You know what I'm saying? Which, because I looked at it like, oh, he's commenting on the post. This person said it, so he had to have saw it. He just condoned it. Just, it, just, just thing on thing, mistakes on my part. You know, but um, after like I'm watching his interviews, I'm like, this is actually a good dude. I realize like, like just hearing his interviews and hearing him talk. I'm like, this dude is like, not who I thought he was. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting this arrogant asshole who, uh, who, who a lot of these, who a lot of some of the racist dudes was able to get behind some of that, which he wasn't that, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't that at all. Afterwards, he came up to me uh, while I was on the ground and right after uh, he took his, he took his victory lap, his walk around. He could have stared at me, rubbed it in, all of that. Even when he popped my arm out, and the rep didn't stop it. He let my arm go. He could have twisted, twerking. He could have damaged my arm up. Um, I noticed things. And then he came around, he's like, hey. He came up to me and he, he, he over my ears, he said, hey, I don't know what was said, but I'm a good person. I respect you. I have nothing but love for you. You know what I mean? He showed me the type of man that he was. So it was only right for me to show that same man in return. Cause that's truly who, that's truly how I like to be and how I feel people should interact with each other. So after that, I'm like, Damn. all right, bro, appreciate you, respect. You know what I mean? I stood up, made sure I stood there while he got his hand raised. Went back, handled what I needed to handle. So I got done, right, at the hospital. I'm like, all right, we're cool. We get there. They're like, I'm going to put it back in place. We're going to get, we're going to sedate you. So I got the, I got that or whatever. Look up. Coach tapped me like, hey, are we leaving? We out. So we leave. We go get in the car, get back to the hotel, pull up to the hotel. Paul Craig's the first person. I see you. Paul Craig's the first person I see whenever uh, whenever I pull up to the hotel. And he just walks up to me with a beer. <laughs> he walks up to me with a beer like here. He's like, and that's when he, the the whole the racist comments or whatever that were said and things. He had no idea about those. Then I seen whenever he found out about it, whenever they said something, and it was like, oh shit. 
Like, you know, from, from there we talked, chopped it up, you know, let me buy you a beer. He told me I don't pay for beer, I don't pay for nothing. And he proceeded to get me drunk as hell. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we, we turned up, you know what I mean? It was fun. You know, Paul got some moves too. I was about to say, what's that? Some moves. He been working on the jujitsu thing. He got a little, you know, he can he can come to the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. With Jamal, his self awareness and self accountability is second to none. Brother, talking to you just before you started the interview about your mindset, and I, I would agree with what I heard. You're one of the guys that really. It, you know, you've taken the L, the injury, but you've never got hung up on it, and it doesn't seem like it's gotten to you. Now, you may tell us otherwise. Maybe there was some bad days, some bad weeks where you were just like, you know, where it hurt and people didn't see it. But what could you tell us about your your mindset dealing with all this? Nah, it, it didn't, and honestly, it did. It, it kind of surprised me. It did surprise me on how I took it. But what it was like, all right, you seen like the still shot in the picture, or even in the video of the fight, whenever. Uh, after I lost, I was sitting on the ground. I'm sitting there and I'm shaking my head. That shaking my head was realization because I already knew right when it happened what I had done. I knew the error I had made. You know, um, me losing was nothing short of me of, of me paying for me disrespecting the game. You know, I disrespected the game in a way that that anybody who truly loves this game and, 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 and strives in this game, which is mostly the top guys, they don't do it. If you want to be one of those guys, you don't do it. You don't do it. You don't do what I did. I felt like all I had to do was show up. I truly, truly felt like all I had to do was show up. Any concerns I had, I uh, any any concerns or any anything I might have been unsure, any type of nerves I felt, I I uh, I I filled it with I filled it with arrogance. You know, it wasn't. It was. It, it's the difference between confidence and just flat out arrogance. It was just flat out arrogance, and uh. I was taught I, I was taught a lesson and I can't I can't be that way. That's not how you approach this game. It sounds like what you're saying was, you know, you got a, a little bit of a reality check and but uh, at least you're processing it and learning it versus denying it. Right. There's nothing there, there, I mean, there was nothing to deny, you know. Um I lost. I didn't get the result that I wanted and that in itself means something has to be addressed. And um, I'm real. I'm real. I'm real with myself. Whether it's about whether it's some shit that I don't want to hear or something I truly don't want to believe, even if it's hard for me to accept, eventually I will come around to the realization of being real with myself. And this is what it is. And this is what it takes. So when you see somebody like Hill that is this skilled athletically, oh, by the way, then he has some of the in other intangibles of heart, of grit, of toughness, of not being scared. Like you're already, not physically, but at least mentally, emotionally already stronger than that night you know in terms of you know you're maturing and you're saying the right things right here i think yeah. this is the type of stuff the promotion wants to hear your fans want to hear that your loved ones want to hear you know that that, that does every athlete doesn't do that you've come to grips with it very professionally it, for me it's not about it's not about what people want to hear it's about what's real i'm just speaking what's real and what's true you know and uh maybe somewhat somewhere down the line maybe like a nephew of mine a training partner one of my people's kids may be in the same position and they might get in that same spot and they need to know they need to know you know um from around here from my gym i'm the first one to do what i'm doing on the level that i'm doing it on and taking this where i'm taking it so uh in a sense there isn't really a, a blueprint for me you know i'm kind of creating a blueprint as i go along and i want to leave the best most effective blueprint behind for, for my guys after me. All fighters tend to say that they're thankful for their fans and team, but with Hill, you know he means it. You know he is genuine and not just saying it for the cameras. Man, if I was a coach of a football team and I knew nothing about your physical skills, I'd already want you to be my quarterback or basketball, I'd want you to be my point guard. You, you seem to have it really up here, man. I applaud you for that. Um, we've spoken to a lot of fighters, you know, we're going on our 15th year. So we've kind of, as I hear goes, say his questions. And I know I say mine, it's, it's there's similar scripts when fighters lose the first time and, and some just months later still aren't dealing with the loss. You've already dealt it. It's behind you and your focus is so strong. That's awesome. And I, I want to ask you, do you think aside from yourself, um, is there somebody who's inspired you to, I guess, have that type of maturity? Your family, your coaches, or or anybody else? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised. I'm inspired by the support. My people still love me regardless. They still, they still show up for me regardless. You know, and uh, with them doing that, how how dare I beat myself down, myself down like that? They're not, they're not hanging on it. They're not pulling back on me at all. So why pull back on myself? Why pull back on any anything, any of the time and anything that they've invested in me? Uh, the the media day that you did have this big team, you know, that you had all these people supporting you. What does this win mean for you? And what does it mean for your family and the team behind you that have been supporting you? Um, it's just, it means that that um, that their belief in me is, is right. You know, the things that they teach me, that they show me, and that they, all the effort and everything they put into me is not going to waste. You know, um, man, I can talk all day about my people. My people are my everything, you know. Um, I come in here and I do what I do. The main thing that's in the forefront is, oh, I need to do this for me now. It's never that. It's, it's, it's all about them. It's all about my people, the people that I've lost. You know what I mean? The people that are still here pushing for me. I work hard. I don't have no choice. I got a team, I got coaches, and I got people behind me that will not let me take, that will not let me take the easy road out. You know, um, everybody needs that. Your preparation, man, I saw you had to get past the arm, but I know it seemed like you had some losses in your family and friends that you had a foot injury. I mean, has this been a, a tough training camp for you? It has. Um, yeah. It has physically, emotionally, yeah. Was there ever any thought of not, you know, of pulling out and just saying maybe this isn't the right time? No, nah, that's, that's not an option for me. You know, I got a family to feed. It is what it is. I got to I gotta do what I got to do with it, and I got to do what I got to do, you know. But, uh, yeah, I definitely, it's definitely been, it's definitely been one of those emotionally type things, just one thing after another, you know. But I'm here, and I'm ready to go. Uh, these guys sacrifice time from their jobs, their families, you know, their bodies, you know, uh, getting in there, just making sure I can be the animal that I need to be. I'm proud of I'm proud of a lot of my guys, but uh, you know what I mean the one, the one one that I've been that I'm really excited about that I really want to get going. You know what I mean he still got some things that some tools that he needs to add to the bag before we put him out there. I got this young guy Jace Jones. He's um he's a beast. He's a uh, he's just, he just turned 20. Young kid. I've been sparring with him for like three years, over three years. He's um he's got the good stuff. He knows how to touch people up. He's still working on it, still learning our, uh, still learning our system and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what he does. I got my brother Juan Romero. Can't wait to see what he does whenever we're ready to uh, to send him out there. We don't just go into fights, just like oh, I can be. I'm really good at this area. You need to be. You need to be proficient in everywhere, in every aspect of the game. Shout out to my uh, team back at Black Lion, and uh, I want to send a message out to people. Uh, just uh, I lost a, I lost a brother to me, very close to me, very near to my heart, very near to my kid's heart. Um, Chris Guyton, uh, he made a bad decision, decided to drink and drive, and it cost him his life. People do better. Um, please don't make this decision. His mom is in pain. A lot of people are in pain. The decisions you make affect the people that you love. And if you're there and you see this happening, please step in and say something, please. You know, I just want to say, Chris, I love you. Grandpa, I love you. Uh, my brother Vince Cosby, I love you. Uh, I've lost a lot of people. I can the list can go on. Jordan, uh, Mike B, just a lot of people. Um, I carry that pain in here with me. Just know that y'all with me, and I'm doing this for y'all. For whatever reason, fight fans and analysts alike chose against Jamal in his latest bout with Jimmy Crute, and Jamal dispatched him quickly and efficiently and made sure to remind his doubters he sees everything said and uses it as motivation to fuel him. A Michael Jordan-esque trait. Keep your eyes on him.